So welcome to the renal orthopedic joint replacement class. Today we're going to talk about hip and knee replacement, what to expect before, during, and after surgery, and how to prepare. So we want you to plan ahead. Everyone is going to need transportation to and from the hospital. And we also want you to have a surgery buddy that can assist you for the first few days at home after your surgery. So if you don't have family or friends to assist you, it might be a good idea to look into some personal care agencies. You can find those by Googling personal care agency. So in planning for your surgery and preparations, we want your surgery buddy to be there to assist you for the first few days after surgery. We want them to be able to assist you with the things that we do daily. We call them activities of daily living. We wake up every morning, we take a shower, we go to the bathroom, we eat, we take our medications, and we do our grooming. These are the types of things that your surgery buddy will be able to assist you with. We also want your surgery buddy to attend the appointments and discharge from the hospital. Your surgery buddy can help you remember the important discussions that you had with your providers and also to help prepare the home if necessary. So in preparing for surgery, we want you to think about the things you're gonna use regularly and put those in a convenient location. Everyone is gonna to need to eat and everyone is going to be on medications. So if those are high in the medicine cabinet or low in the pantry, you may wanna move those to a convenient location, waste level where you can reach them without having to stretch or reach. Make it easy on yourself for the first few days when you get home. Seating and sleeping arrangements. Make sure that you've got a good solid chair that you can utilize while recovering that will give you a good point of reference and balance when you're approaching the walker. Also your sleeping arrangements. If your bedroom is upstairs, you want to make sure that you're able to safely navigate those stairs. So be sure the physical therapist at the hospital is able to uh, show you how to navigate the stairs safely before you discharge. Also remove tripping hazards, things like throw rugs, oxygen tubing, electrical cords. These are things that can cause tripping hazards when you get home. So remove those before you go to surgery. It will be a safer environment when you get home. And then there are many assistive devices that can also help you in preparing for surgery. In preparing for your surgery, there will be additional tools that will be helpful in your successful recovery, such as a front wheel walker, a toilet riser, shower seat, reacher, long shoehorn, and of course cold therapy. These items can be obtained through our rock shop here locally in the clinic, or you can search for them on Amazon or most pharmacies will carry these items as well. Most of these items unfortunately are not covered by your insurance. Advanced care plans. If you already have and completed an advanced directive, please bring a copy of that to the renal orthopedic clinic and also take a copy with you to the hospital. In preparing for surgery, some of you may need to get clearance from your primary doctor or possibly some specialists. You want to make sure if you have diabetes that you have got your blood sugar under control. We also would like you to stop or reduce smoking and alcohol consumption prior to surgery. It's always a good idea to exercise. Any exercise that you do prior to your surgery will make you more fit and your recovery will go smoother. It's also important to eat healthy foods and stay active. Two weeks before surgery, you're going to receive a surgery packet in the mail. There will be a letter in that packet that contains the date and time of your surgery. We'll also have the phone number to the hospital where your surgery will be conducted. You need to call that hospital and schedule your pre-admit appointment. There will be a phone number right there for that hospital call. Please do that when you get this surgery letter. There will be pre-op and post-op appointments in that surgery packet if ordered by your doctor and also physical therapy prescription if your doctor has ordered that. At this time, you should also stop all herbal supplements and that includes anything that is not a prescription by your physician. One week before surgery, we want you to stop aspirins and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Also, it's important to discuss any prescription blood thinners with your surgeon prior to surgery. Avoid any dental procedures. We recommend no procedures for 90 days after your surgery. Please stop shaving your legs five days prior to surgery. 
and check your skin for open wounds or rashes. Any open wounds, rashes, or nicks from shaving are potential areas for infection. It's also very important to hydrate. Be sure you're drinking plenty of water. When you go to that pre-admit appointment at the hospital, they're going to provide you a special soap to use prior to surgery. It's called chlorhexidine. You will use this soap starting two days prior to your surgery from the neck down, not on your face or genital area. After shower, please use a clean towel and clean clothes. One day prior to surgery, same process, clean towel, clean sheets on the bed, and clean clothing. And then the morning of surgery, one more time, use that chlorhexidine soap, clean towel, and clean clothing before you head to the hospital for your surgery. The day before surgery, your surgery buddy can help you here. Pack your bag with comfortable clothing, leave your valuables at home. If you have a front wheel walker, be sure to put that in the car. Take some extra pillows to make yourself comfortable on the way to and from the hospital. And most importantly, follow the surgery letter instructions closely. Your surgeon will tell you exactly when to stop eating and drinking prior to your operation. Your procedure will begin in the pre-op holding area. From the operating room, you will go to the post anesthetic care unit. The nurses there will monitor you as you wake up from your anesthesia and when you are medically safe to go to the nursing unit you will proceed there where you will be reunited with your surgery buddy and your family. This is what we call post-op day zero. These three items are discharge criteria. If you feel like you have to go to the restroom and you're unable to void or if you feel like your pain is creeping up and you're not comfortable, now is the time to let your nurse know because the expectation is that you will discharge within 12 to 36 hours home with your surgery buddy. So now that we've met the discharge criteria and your surgery buddy has delivered you safely home, we want to talk about what is normal postoperatively. What can you expect now that you're home? So for the first one to two weeks, more or less postoperatively, you will experience any or all of the following items. Pain, nausea, swelling, bruising, constipation, changes in urinary habits, fatigue, and decreased appetite. Take your pain medication on a schedule for the first few days after surgery. It will not be completely eliminated. We expect you to experience some pain. This is your way of your body letting you know that you are healing. Think of a mind-body connection. Use white noise or other ways to distract yourself with your surgery buddy to get through any of the discomfort. Be sure that you take your pain medication with food. It can cause nausea for some. Common medications that are prescribed after surgery include aspirin, which is an anticoagulant, Xeralto, Senna and Colase, which are stool softeners, Celebrex, which is an anti-inflammatory, Ultram, which is a non-narcotic pain reliever, Tylenol, also a non-narcotic pain reliever, Lyrica for nerve pain, and most importantly, Roxycodone, Norco, and Dilaudid, which will be used postoperatively for pain management. The narcotic pain medications work very well for managing your pain postoperatively, but they do have some side effects we want you to be aware of. Constipation is something that we frequently associate with the use of narcotic pain medication. We're going to recommend that you start each day with four ounces of warm prune juice, drinking plenty of fluids, adding fiber to your diet, and most importantly, if you have not had a bowel movement by day three, please go to the pharmacy, select an over-the-counter laxative, wean off the narcotic pain medications as soon as possible. Swelling and bruising. We want you to keep in mind the phrase toes above the nose. It's going to be important to use ice and elevation to assist with the swelling and bruising that is common after surgery. For those of you that are having hip surgery, we want you to lay on a flat surface like a table or a bed 
elevate your toes to the point they're above your nose. You'll see in the photo that there are pillows assisting the elevation with our patient from the hips to the ankles. We would like you to be in this position two to three times a day, 15 to 20 minutes, also using ice at the incision area. For those of you having knee surgery, the process is similar but slightly different. Toes above the nose, same as if you had the hip surgery. But you'll notice in the photo, the support is under the ankle with open space under the knee joint. You'll also notice the bag of ice on top of the incision area. We want this area under the knee to be open so that the knee can be totally straight. We do not want to have a bend in the knee joint. At this point, it could cause scar, scar tissue that could ultimately make it difficult for full extension postoperatively. Utilize toes above the nose, ice and elevation, again, 15 to 20 minutes, two to three times a day. Exercise and activity is important. Not many years ago, a surgery like this, you would go home and recover for six to eight weeks in bed. Modern medicine and research has shown us that getting up and walking and repositioning every hour actually promotes the recovery process. We do want you to limit the amount of time that you're standing. Your body will tell you if you've been on your feet too long, listen to that and rest. Do perform physical therapy exercises daily. Your physical therapist at the hospital will give you examples. You can always do ankle pumps or foot pumps when you're resting as well. These will help your circulation. During your recovery period, incision care and infection prevention will differ by surgeon. Your dressings may vary, so please follow the discharge instructions closely. Showers are generally okay. Keep dressing clean and dry. You can use a product like Glad Press and Seal or Saran Wrap uh, that can wrap around your incision area to help keep that area clean and dry. No baths, hot tubs, pools, lakes, streams, oceans, any bodies of water until the incision is completely healed and scab free. You will also need to pre-medicate for dental procedures. Avoid for the first 90 days after surgery and less emergent. During your recovery period, it's important to keep the deep breathing activities going. Narcotic pain medication tends to suppress your breathing. You may have a low grade temperature. Using the incentive spirometer that you get at the hospital, five to 10 breaths each hour will assist in keeping your lungs open and reduce the chance for pneumonia. It is also important during the recovery period to prevent blood clots. These can occur in either leg. Symptoms often include deep muscle pain, swelling, aching or tenderness, red or warm skin. If you experience chest pain or shortness of breath, please call 911. Continuing with the prevention of blood clots, if you have travel planned, please discuss this with your surgeon. Motion is important. Airline travel is discouraged. You can always do foot and ankle pumps when you're traveling in a car or in a plane, and it's important to get up and Walk and reposition every hour during this travel. Be sure to take all of your blood thinners and drink plenty of water. During the recovery period, you can experience warmth, redness, discoloration and swelling, pain, bruising, hypersensitivity, aches and pains in other areas. And some of you may experience noise from the new joint. This could include squeaking, popping, or grinding. These are all normal sounds. Remember, it takes time for pain to go away. You may experience difficulty sleeping. Decreased energy, mood, and appetite is common. Full recovery can take six months to a year. Your surgery buddy should be with you at the appointments and discharge from hospitals. It's important that your surgery buddy be there to remind you of all of the recommendations and precautions that will be necessary during your recovery. We also want your surgery buddy to stay at home with you during the first few days of your recovery. 
they will likely need to assist you with transportation to and from appointments and therapy, and also provide you with emotional support during your recovery. It's important to use cold therapy to help reducing in the swelling and bruising that can occur post-operatively. We want you to know that the swelling and bruising can look like the photo that you see here. If you see this, this is not a reason to panic. Please know that ice and elevation, toes above the nose, is going to assist in reducing the swelling and bruising. The photo that we see here, although is somewhat extreme, it is within normal limits and is not a reason for concern. If you experience active bleeding, saturated dressing, it is important to call your surgeon immediately. The third photo that you see here is more common in what we would expect to see in your recovery. There is some slight swelling and bruising, but the dressing is still intact, and there is no active bleeding. So when should you call your surgeon? If you have a temperature that is greater than 101.5 degrees, if you experience chills, if you experience redness, heat, swelling, or drainage from your incision site, if you experience sudden and severe increase in pain, if you are experiencing the inability to bear weight on the surgical leg, or if you have calf pain or tenderness not relieved with ice or elevation, please contact your surgeon. When in doubt, if you have any concerns about your incision, the amount of pain you're experiencing, nausea, any concerns you may have, please call our office. Our goal is to keep you well and avoid unnecessary emergency room visits. If you have any concerns, please call. We can help.